Welcome to Professor Mad. In this video, we're going to talk about Ohm's Law, one of the most fundamental and important concepts in the world of electronics. Let's start with electrons. One of the most fundamental properties of electrons is that they don't like each other. They always try to move away from each other as much as possible. When a lot of electrons are crammed into one place, a huge tension or pressure builds up. Imagine a crowded room where nobody wants to be near each other. It gets pretty intense. If we provide an escape route for these electrons to move to an area with fewer electrons, they'll eagerly move along. It's like rolling balls from high ground to low ground. Electrons always prefer to move from high electron pressure to low pressure. So to move electrons from one place to another, we need to connect two areas with a conductor where there is a difference in electron pressure. This electron pressure difference is known as voltage. Since electrons are negatively charged, we label the high pressure side with a negative symbol and the low pressure side with a positive symbol. Therefore, electrons move from the negative side to the positive side. The movement of electrons creates a flow of electric charge, which we term as electric current. Since electrons are negatively charged, this flow is technically a negative current. But we humans prefer positive things. So when there's a negative current flowing in one direction, we call it a positive current flowing in the opposite direction. In fact, almost every time we use the term current, we're actually referring to the direction opposite to the electron flow. So while electrons always flow from the negative side to the positive side, the current is said to flow from the positive side to the negative side. It might seem a bit confusing, but that's just how we roll in the world of electronics. Now we know two things about electronics, voltage and current. There is one more important factor to consider, resistance. Even though conductive materials allow electrons to move through them, it doesn't mean that electrons go straight from the negative side to the positive side. There are trillions of atoms between the two ends of a conductor. As electrons try to move to the positive side, they collide with these atoms, causing their path to deviate. So, resistance is the opposition a material shows to electron flow, caused by collisions of electrons with obstacles. If the path has fewer obstacles, the electrons will move quickly from negative side to positive side. We call these materials low resistance. However, if there are many obstacles, the movement of electrons slows down, and we call these materials high resistance. So these collisions are what actually cause resistance. Now we know the three basic pillars of electronics. Voltage, the electron pressure difference that motivates electrons to move from one point to another. We measure voltage using the unit volts. Current, the flow of electrons moving from high electron pressure to low electron pressure. We measure the amount of electron flow per second using the unit amperes. Resistance, the opposition a material shows to electron flow caused by collisions of electrons with obstacles. Resistance is measured using the unit ohms. Ohm's law describes the relationship among these three quantities. In simple terms, Ohm's law says, the current through a circuit is directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance. Let's illustrate this. The current is directly proportional to the voltage. Here the voltage is increasing from V1 to V3. Let's see what happens to the current. It's clear the current is also increasing from I1 to I3. If we increase the voltage, electrons move faster, resulting in a higher current. If we decrease the voltage, electrons move slower, resulting in a lower current. Now let's illustrate what happens to the current with different resistances. 
the current is inversely proportional to the resistance. Here, the resistance is increasing from R1 to R3. Let's see what happens to the current. It's clear the current is decreasing from I1 to I3. If we increase the resistance, electrons face more collisions, slowing down their movement, which lowers the current. If we decrease the resistance, electrons face fewer collisions, speeding up their movement, which increases the current. Let's apply this knowledge to a circuit. The battery supplies the required voltage for electrons to flow. The electrons flow from the negative side to the positive side, but we say the current flows from positive to negative. The light bulb has internal resistance that opposes the current. According to Ohm's law, the current through a circuit is directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance. By combining these relationships, we get that the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. We can arrange this relationship in three forms. Resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current. Voltage is equal to the current times the resistance. You should be able to use all three forms appropriately depending on the problem you're solving. Now let's solve some problems using Ohm's law. Calculate the voltage across this resistor. We can see the resistance of the resistor is 25 ohms. A current of 250 milliampere goes through the circuit, which we can write as 0.25 amperes. So what is the voltage? Let's use Ohm's law. Voltage equals the current times the resistance. So let's substitute the values. By solving, we get the voltage. The voltage across the resistor is 6.25 volts. Let's move on to the next question. If a light bulb has a resistance of 240 ohms and is connected to a 120 volt power source, calculate the current flowing through it. First, sketch the circuit. This will help you understand the problem better. Now the resistance is 240 ohms and the voltage is 120 volts. We have to calculate the current. Let's use Ohm's law. Current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So let's substitute the values. By solving, we get the current. So the current flowing through the light bulb is 0.5 amperes. Let's discuss one last problem. If a hair dryer operates at 220 volts and draws a current of 5 amperes, calculate its resistance. First, sketch the circuit. This will help you understand the problem better. Now, the current is 5 amps and the voltage is 220 volts. We have to calculate the resistance. Let's use Ohm's law. Resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current. So let's substitute the values. By solving, we get the resistance. So the resistance of this hair dryer is 44 ohms. That's all for today. If you think my contents are valuable to the world, you are welcome to join my Patreon community. Like and subscribe to Professor Mad for more interesting videos.